Welcome back to season two of Authentically Peculiar with Marcia. I am your host, Marcia Blaine, a licensed professional counselor, a clinical hypnotherapist, an author, motivator, and life coach. Join us during the season as we begin to normalize freedom. Authentically Peculiar with Marcia. Welcome back to Authentically Peculiar with Marcia. We are running full steam ahead into 2024. And I know I said the last podcast about Jada Pinkett Smith's book, Worthy, would be the last one for the year. But you, if you know me, if you followed me for quite some time, you understand that I always make it an intention to go and Talk to the universe about the next year and what that needs to look like, how to set things into motion. I can't say my message is for everyone, but everyone that it's for, you'll get it. You'll grab hold to it, and then it'll be a guide for you moving into 2024. So the title or the theme of the entire year is journey to yourself, being yourself in 2024, living for yourself in 2024. And that's going to encompass many, many things such as a month of self-empowerment, of self-commitment, self-love, self-validation, self-worth, finding yourself and releasing bonds from others and society and situations, as well as really learning to love yourself in the process? What is your commitment? What is your consistency? What are your thoughts? The running uh, scripture, and of course, this isn't a religious podcast, but I always tie back into something that's going to stick and pin with me throughout the year. So as a man think it, so is he. What are you thinking about yourself? How are you allowing yourself to be seen and heard and respected in your own life? How are you honoring yourself? Are you finding that you have conditioned yourself to just kind of fit in with people, that you stopped having a voice, that you made yourself easily discardable? Are you finding that part of your process of who you are is being needed and not wanted? We want to move past that in 2024. I see so many people on social media who are really fighting to stay present and prevalent in other people's lives except for their own. They're doing things that's kind of outside of their norm that really doesn't serve them other than a few likes, a few laughs. But on the inside, they struggle. I see so many content creators who are busying themselves to get content out there to make people like it and to make people follow them so that, of course, they can get a paycheck, right? But... What is that doing to you mentally? How is that impeding you from being your best self and putting yourself forward? How is that helping you, right? You want to begin to identify where you are with your own life, with things for you. You know, I'm speaking now to those parents who have adult children. Listen, enjoy your empty nest time. You've done all that you can do. You've done all that the law requires you to do. Everything else is extra. What are you doing for yourself? Are you moving because you are needed or are you moving because you are wanted? You have to ask yourself that question on this year of journeying into yourself. Are you doing things just so that someone can say, hey, come on over here. I need you. It's better to be wanted than needed because the moment that you are no longer needed, here comes being discarded. 
Are you tired of that cycle? Why are you discarding yourself, your feelings, your push for who you are when you haven't moved to actually address the things that you're thinking? When was the last time you sat in a silent place to actually connect with your feelings and your thoughts about things? When was the last time you slowed down so that you could honor yourself with your feelings and your thoughts? When was the last time that you said, I want to see this happen in my life, and then it's followed by a but? That but means you just discarded yourself thinking about how everybody else was going to function if you chose you. You have to be willing to choose you. And you know, if you follow me, you know that I always liken it to the uh, airline uh, flight attendants when they're doing the safety presentation and they are telling you, listen, when this oxygen falls, you can't worry about anybody else. You have to put it on you first. Let me ask the question. What is your fear of doing life for you? Do you feel like you're going to be judged? Do you feel like it's kind of mean to do that or selfish to do that? If those are your feelings, then you're caught in the matrix. <laughs> you're just caught up because that means that you've conditioned yourself to stop existing for you. Take a quick assessment. Think about the people that need you to be around. When was the last time you were able to go to them with the need? When was the last time they honored you by saying, hey, I just want to be around you? If that hasn't happened, you're in a lopsided situation. And it doesn't matter if it's your, your family or friends or children or whomever. Anytime that you are off balance, you're really missing the best of who you are. When was the last time you went inside of yourself and said, I should be doing this, but they need this. Or I want to do this, but they need this. How often does that occur in your life? You're putting yourself in a life sentence by not honoring your own needs, by not standing up and having a voice. Will people be upset? They will. Will they be okay? They will. Here's the truth. People will need you as long as you allow yourself to be needed. When you switch it to, do you want to be around me? Watch how the invitations of come on over here dry up. Watch how your phone doesn't ring as much. Watch how you don't get text as much or invited to as much because there's really no need you'll then see who those true people are in your life because they're going to stick around you whether they need or not. It's because they want to. Do you have any want to associations, friendships, relationships? Where are they? How are you feeding into those? Have you taken the time to sit and actually express your expectations from these dual relationships? Right? Have you taken the time to really honor you in saying, listen, I can't be always the one doing or coming or calling or any of that. Have you assessed and told people how you want it to be treated? The better question is, how are you treating yourself? As we go into 2024, I'm encouraging you to make it a year of self, to make it a year where you are conditioning the love that you have for you. When you do that, you honestly, you're going to clear out, air out all the trash, all the toxicity and all that kind of stuff. And what you're going to be left with are the ones that are supposed to be in your life, in their natural state, in that natural existence. You're going to find that you have less stress you'll sleep better. You can make more commitments to yourself. 
because you don't have all of these things hanging off of you that's preventing you from actually doing the things that you want to do in your life. How have you shut down on your wants? Why don't you go back and write a list and pick those wants back up? Why don't you honor yourself by saying, I'm going first. And if I have the bandwidth left over, then I'll reach out to someone who may need me and or want me. The thing is, it's about balance. Everyone wants to belong. Everyone wants to feel love. Everyone wants to be accepted. But it all has to begin with you. If you aren't needing you, wanting you, or accepting you, then how are you showing up in your own life? Hmm. When was the last time you showed up in your own life? How did you show up in your life? Are you expecting others to give you things that you haven't been able to give yourself? If you are, that's the reason why things are off balance. I would encourage you to no longer go in the room and cry or be frustrated when others aren't seeing you until you start seeing yourself. I know that it's difficult to be around a bunch of people and they need you to be around, but you don't feel wanted. I understand that difficulty, but that's when you have to change that for yourself. Want to be around you. When was the last time you did something by yourself? Maybe take a trip or go to dinner or breakfast or lunch. Go out to the movies by yourself. When was the last time you enjoyed time with just you? If you have difficulty enjoying time with yourself, you're going to always be in a position where you have to be needed. My concern for anyone that's in that position of being needed is when you're no longer needed, then what? Do you shrivel up and die? Do you go find new people to need you? What do you do? Do you dislike being with yourself that much where you're hiding behind others needing you? If that's the case, you're definitely going to have to do a mindset shift. You're going to have to give yourself permission to say, and, and you don't have to, honestly, I'm saying you're going to have to, but for those that want to shift and actually start filling life beyond the need, it's going to be a mindset shift. It's not going to be comfortable. You're going to second guess when the phone lines dry up. You're going to second guess when you're not getting those invites or you're no longer hosting everything, you're going to second guess all of those times. And the reason is, is because you have become so accustomed to being needed that you stopped understanding what it's like to be wanted. When we think about that from intimate relationship situations, a lot of times people who are driven by being needed, enter into a relationship and they can become extremely clingy. They can have a lot of requests, but they have no expectations and standards. And then they become disappointed when they aren't getting what they need from the relationship. Well, the truth is, or not what they need from the relationship, what they wanted from the relationship, excuse me. <clears throat> In that want, if you can't express to that person what you want, what you're expecting from a relationship, and listen, this is going way beyond financial implications and things of that nature. I'll say this for me in my big old age at 55 and a half, if I'm still looking for someone to scoop me up and take care of me and things of that nature, then I'm already off track because at 55 and a half, I should have some things going on for myself. So I'm not looking for a financier, right? I'm not looking for someone to finance my life. 
I would want someone who is, is desiring and want to be in my life so that we can continue to enhance each other's betters. But if you're going through it because you need someone to cook for and clean for, you need to have someone to be intimate with, it's really, really easy to be disrupted and devastated through the disappointment. You really want to ask yourself, if I desire a relationship, what does that relationship need to look like for me? Who are you in the relationship? I read a post uh, earlier today that said, hey, men, in 2024, when you get ready to start dating, don't date broke women. I would add on don't date broken individuals on either side, because if they are looking for someone that need them, that brokenness is going to come in. And it could be more than what you can handle right now. You have to decide for yourself, where am I? How am I showing up for me? What are my expectations of myself? In this year of self, I encourage you to recognize a few things. One, your thoughts are going to be your guide to the manifestation. Two, understanding your why behind your actions is going to free you up. Three, setting boundaries and expectations that's doable for you because you're the first person that should love you. You're the first person that should want you. Four, giving yourself space to really honor yourself in those quiet moments, in those dating moments, in those, uh, those wanted moments, wanting yourself being able to honor you in those spaces. And then five, recognizing the power of your voice and understanding why you're doing and moving the way that you're moving. In this year of self, I hope that you're able to make a commitment to your own goals, that you remain consistent in achieving those goals, as well as you turn your thought process around. There's a, a podcast out there that's called Permissions to Think Differently. I hope that you're able to turn your thought processes around, move outside of those boxes, those dis disruptions, those restrictions that you've placed in your life so that you can actually be your best self. This move into the year of self. Imagine if the world move into a year of self, how freeing that would be so that you can want and need others. If you're more busy trying to fill the voids of need, you're going to miss the wants and you're going to find yourself burned out, burned over, pushed away, isolated, depressed, filled with anxiety. And I'm not saying being needed is the only reason why someone may uh, endure anxiety. What I am saying is, let's lessen the curve so that in finding who you are on this journey to yourself, rediscovering you, rediscovering your likes, your dislikes, your strengths, your area of improvement, discovering who you actually are. Because I can guarantee you, the person that you thought that you were as a child, you're not that as an adult. You probably moved away from that because life, various experiences pushed you there. So I encourage you to really honor yourself in this space of fulfilling this year of self. So here's your challenge. Go out, identify your goals for 2024 for yourself. In my counseling, um, business, I encourage clients to use four categories. What are your, uh, your happiness goals, your home goals, health, and what's that hustle? How would you break that down into quarters every three months achieving something for yourself? And it could be something as simple as going to get 
a massage, which is something that you won't do because the money, you say the money isn't there, but when you start looking at the money, you're kind of throwing money away. Things that you want to do. What is that hustle like? What is your home like? What is actually happiness for you? And try to ask yourself that question uh, about happiness or define it without including the people that need you. Oftentimes when I ask that question, I hear a lot of, I love to see everybody happy around me. I love being there for them and giving them all of themselves. And there's nothing in there about themselves. It's all about what you're giving away to everyone except yourself. When you tap into your own happiness and you establish goals that are reachable and doable and sometimes maybe challenging, you'll give yourself that release so that this year to yourself is a year of truth and authenticity. It's a year of rejuvenation, excuse me. (laughs) I was going to say renovation, but that could possibly work. (laughs) Renovation of yourself changing who you are, rejuvenation, restoration. You want to really get into a place where you learn how to pray and meditate again. You really want to get into a place where you are so connected with the universe that you can hear the voice, that guidance for you. I had someone to say to me on yesterday, I don't know if I know how to hear the voice. And the toughest part about learning to connect and hear the voice of the universe is really being quiet, sitting still, moving all of those thoughts that are blocking you from hearing. I read Courtney B. Vance's book, and then I'm going to close it out. When he first started going to therapy, his therapist said to him, write down your dreams. Every night, same time, go to bed on time. Before you go to bed, reach out to the universe and say, show me my dreams. Take me to the next level. That is something that you have to become intentional with so that you can learn to hear the voice of the universe, the voice of God for you in your life and where that's moving to. I hope that 2024 is everything that you desire on this journey to yourself, this move, this year of self for you. I hope that as you are finding yourself, you're actually introducing others to the process of finding themselves. So take good care. We are gearing up for a powerful 2024 with the podcast, five-minute meditations, speaking engagements, and of course, counseling and therapy. I want you to grab hold to you. After you finish viewing this podcast, grab a mirror. Go hug yourself. Go in the bathroom. That way your hands are free. Hug yourself and say to you, I got you. And I love you. And I see you. And then just hold yourself for a moment. Tears are probably going to flow because you had not done that in a while. So take good care. I'll see you soon. Thank you for a wonderful year with Authentically Peculiar with Marcia, to all of my guests. Thank you to all the listeners and viewers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's take it up a notch in 2024. I see you. Namaste.